Uh, maybe just start off with the earnings and, and walk us through why you think there were major reasons why there was a bit of decline uh, in your earnings from a year ago. And what is the outlook looking for 2022? Thanks, Yvonne and David. Thanks for having me again. Uh, so actually, the, our underlying numbers are very, very strong. Um, if you look at our retail sales of our tenants uh, over the year in mainland China, they've been up 50, over 50 percent. Uh, so what, some of the reasons for the miss is actually just accounting and uh, capitalized interest. So this is due to the delivery of our Wuhan mall earlier this year. Uh, so actually, across the board, the rentals are up uh, double digits and, and then also across all of our malls. Uh, and mainland China continues to be strong for us. Uh, on the other hand, Hong Kong, as you alluded to earlier, is still a little bit of a challenge. Uh, that being said, we feel like we found the bottom. Second half of 2021 was flat, just down 1%, uh, as opposed to the previous several quarters, which were down significantly more than that. So we're actually feeling quite good about mainland China. Uh, I'm just wondering, then, it, it, do you think when it comes to zero COVID, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of debate whether how sustainable it is uh, in Hong Kong and China. How do you see it from a business perspective? Well, zero COVID is clearly difficult for business. Uh, in Hong Kong, I think it's been a little bit more challenging. Uh, but in mainland China, I think people have learned to live with the zero COVID. Uh, we all carry our health codes around. We have the mask policy. Uh, and in, in mainland China, it does not affect uh, the retail sales when there's no outbreak. So clearly, when there's some kind of outbreak, as there has been in recent uh, weeks in Tianjin, we see consumers fall off uh, in terms of numbers and, and retail figures. Uh, in Hong Kong, it's the same. Uh, in Hong Kong, I think it's a little been a little bit more challenging. Uh, I think what we heard uh, the government announced yesterday in terms of easing of the 21-day quarantine for incoming uh, travelers. I think that is an uh, attempt to address this, and I hope they continue in, along those lines. Adriel, uh, yeah, David here. Uh, I'm going to ask you about Hong Kong, and then we can talk about the mainland. Uh, as you were alluding to, they're certainly a big part of your portfolio. I, I guess just simply on Hong Kong, what's your outlook for, for, for leases uh, this year? Where is the trend headed? Well, it's been a tough start to 2022 with this fifth wave in Hong Kong. Uh, so I can't say uh, that I'm particularly optimistic. That being said, uh, retail sales are actually uh, flat to marginally up uh, last quarter of last year. Uh, so hopefully rents can come along uh, and raise with that. Uh, but with Omicron, it's, uh, you know, all bets are off. We'll see how things go. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, there's so many moving parts. I mean, I would imagine even someone like you that has really had just data on the ground, uh, not enough really to project. Now, what I want to ask you about now is your sense of the residential property market in China. I mean, the overall number and granted that there is obviously variation between various cities is showing a fourth month of contraction of new home sales. I'm just wondering from your perspective, is that forcing you to adjust how you price your projects, and is that forcing you to even lower them more than you had previously thought? So we've heard a lot of questions uh, about the mainland China residential, uh, the, the market that we play in. Yeah. So we haven't yet started selling our mainland China residential. We should be doing that later this year. Uh, however, we're clearly in the high end. So we're definitely yeah. serving uh, a higher end clientele, which I think is subject to slightly different market pressures. Uh, in terms of the kind of mm. contraction in housing sales? Is that affecting uh, the w sense of wealth? The sense of wealth creation, do people feel worse off? Uh, well, if you look at our luxury retail sales, it seems not mm. to be the case. Uh, so you have a little bit of conflicting information there. Uh, however, I think we're still very confident about the prospects for the high-end uh, residential market in mainland China. And for how long? You're in a much better position in terms of, of leverage here. Uh, low leverage ratios of 24 percent compared to some of your peers on the mainland. Does that position and that strong position that you have uh, give you more of a sense to, to try to maybe bid for some of these distressed developers right now? What, what's your taste of that right now? <laughs> Absolutely. So I've been meeting with uh, government. I've been meeting with peers. I've been uh, looking very closely at some of the opportunities that the market has presented itself. Uh, there's clearly a lot more opportunity in the market for lowly geared companies and very resilient companies like us, like Hang Lung. Uh, so these opportunities are coming up. 
Uh, that being said, sometimes the, the portfolios that these uh, distressed companies are offering are not really in line with what we're looking for. So uh, we, we're definitely looking. We think there's opportunity, but we have to be very judicious. Okay, can you give us a sense, and I'm guessing you're not going to tell me names specifically, and that's fair enough, but uh, can you give us a sense of what types of assets would make sense given your portfolio, and also just the broad understanding or just a broad sense of how much you are actually looking to spend in case you do go the acquisition route? Absolutely. So uh, if we do acquisitions, I would say we were we would only look at assets. So we would not be actually looking to merge uh, or acquire companies. Uh, so it's more of an, on an asset level. Uh, that being said, um, anybody who has high quality properties in tier one or tier two cities, uh, you know, Hanglong is primarily a luxury mall developer. So we prefer commercial assets. Um, and I, you know, I think that uh, this, the sky is the limit. Uh, if somebody has right. a great asset for sale, we're definitely willing to pony up for it. And you mentioned about the luxury side of things, uh, proper leasing uh, some of your mainland uh, China properties, so robust growth. Do you expect that sort of growth momentum to continue uh, for this year, just given you know, Omicron, uh, you know, you have multiple cities dealing with double variants as well. Uh, is there a sense that luxury can kind of drive that? So it's it's very strange, um, you know, with all the bad news in the world today, somehow the luxury sector in mainland China is doing fantastically. Uh, so we're very optimistic for the, fir for the first and second halves of this year. Uh, that being said, you know, we have to kind of taper it because we've reached such a high base right now. 2020 and 2021 were both great years for us, uh, especially the second half of 2020. And so how do you work off of that high base, right? Uh, the mainland Chinese consumers, uh, can, can only buy so much. Uh, people are talking about borders reopening maybe later this year. That's the hope. Uh, and if that happens, then, then it will be more difficult to say. Uh, but we're very, very confident in the mainland Chinese consumer of luxury. Mm. Very short term, what are you seeing in terms of foot traffic recently in your malls? Oh, it's, it's very up and down. So once there's an up, outbreak, if there's certain concerns in cities, uh, the foot traffic falls off, uh, falls off a cliff. Um, it's the same happens for our hotel properties. Uh, but then the next day, once things have cleared up, once the confidence has come back, and we're talking a matter of uh, you know, days after the uh, cases have cleared up, uh, foot traffic and sales come right back. So it's very, people here are very adaptive. And I think that the market has managed to find a way to coexist. I want to bring back the issue with Hong Kong as well. Do you think that uh, Hong Kong is going to be actively bidding for land uh, for residential development in the near future? And what is the environment like right now? Because it seems like a lot of these government plots are being deployed mm -hmm. for public housing, too. Yeah, so I'm really glad to see that the government's been picking up the pace in terms of providing housing and providing land for housing in Hong Kong. Uh, that being said, I think uh, the high-end market is still where we hope to play uh, when it comes to Hong Kong housing. Uh, I think the high-end market will be resilient, uh, whereas mass market, it'll do okay. Uh, we don't expect any big bumps in the road, uh, but because of the supply, uh, we prefer to play in the high-end and be a little bit more uh, picky when it comes to the type of plots that we buy.